There is a large variety of presser feet available for machines today. Some may come with your machine, while others may be purchased separately. Some feet simply snap on or off the machine, and some are removed by pressing a lever or button on the shank. Others are attached to a shank and need to be removed together using a small screwdriver. Here's how to change different styles of presser feet. Some machines have a shank with a release button or lever. This is pressed so that the foot releases. Place the desired foot on the needle plate, aligning the foot holder with the presser foot pin. Lower the presser foot lifter so that the foot holder snaps onto the foot. Some feet already have the shank attached, so it will be necessary to remove the shank currently on the machine in order to put the new foot on. Use a small screwdriver to loosen the shank on the machine and completely remove the screw. Set the new foot and shank in place, then replace the screw and tighten it securely. Let's take a look at some different presser feet. The satin foot, or applique foot, has many uses. It is commonly used for projects where the decorative stitching is very dense. This foot has a tunnel or groove on the underside, allowing densely sewn stitches to pass freely under it. The most common use for the satin foot is applique. Appliques are normally applied to a project using either a blanket stitch or a dense satin stitch. Secure the applique to the base fabric with either a fusible web or with fabric spray adhesive. Place tearaway stabilizer under the base fabric to help the dense stitches sew smoothly. Stitch around the applique stopping to pivot at corners and curves. When the zipper foot is attached to the machine, the straight stitch can be used to insert zippers. The zipper foot has a left side and a right side, so that you can sew with the needle to the left or right of the foot, depending on your project. There are several types of zipper applications, but we'll show you one application called the centered zipper. Sew the seam of the garment but machine based the part of the seam where the zipper will be inserted with a long straight stitch. Press the seam open. Remove the regular presser foot and attach the zipper foot so it is to the right of the needle. Place the zipper face down on the seam with the zipper coil directly on the seam line and the top stop about 3 quarters to 1 inch below the top edge. Machine baste the zipper in place. Now, with a regular straight stitch, sew across the bottom of the zipper, pivot, and then stitch up the side of the zipper. Now move the zipper foot so it is to the left of the needle, then stitch the bottom, pivot, and sew up the other side of the zipper. Remove the basting. Invisible zippers are most often seen in the center back or side of garments, as well as in home deck accessories. This zipper application is often thought of as very difficult to do. However, it's really one of the easiest when you use the invisible zipper foot. The invisible zipper is sewn to the garment before the seam is sewn, instead of afterward, which is just opposite of other types of zipper applications such as centered or lapped zippers. It is helpful to apply fusible interfacing to the wrong side of the seam allowances, particularly when working with stretchy or unstable fabric. Cut two pieces of interfacing one half inch wide and about one inch longer than the zipper itself. Then, fuse to the wrong sides of the seam allowances. Press the zipper coils flat with a cool iron. 
pin the right side of the zipper to the right side of the garment. Place the zipper so that the coil sits on the seam line and the top of the zipper is 3 quarters of an inch below the top raw edge of the fabric. Stitch with the right slot of the presser foot over the coil. Then, pin the other side of the zipper tape to the right side of the other garment section. Stitch with the coil in the left slot of the foot. Place the regular zipper foot on the machine so the foot is to the left of the needle. Set the needle in the far right position. Close the zipper, then sew the rest of the seam. The adjustable zipper cording foot has a screw on the back, making it possible to move the foot manually to the left or right. This is great for creating piping or cording because the foot can be adjusted manually so that you can sew very closely to the piping when creating or inserting it. Just cover the cord with a strip of fabric, then stitch to encase the cord. It can now be applied to your project. You can use fabric cut with the grain for piping that will be sewn into straight edges or fabric cut on the bias for piping that will be sewn into curved areas. The blind hem foot makes it quick and easy to sew hems on garments and home deck projects. There are various styles of blind hem feet, but what they have in common is an extension at the front of the foot for guiding the fabric fold. To make a blind hem, First turn the hem up to the depth you want, then press. Finish the raw edge of the fabric with a zigzag stitch, over edge stitch, or trim with pinking shears. Pin the hem in place. Fold the fabric back like this so that it is against the right side of the fabric with the top edge of the hem extending about a quarter inch to the right side of the folded fabric. Reposition the pins to secure the fold. Start sewing slowly at the fabric fold. If you catch too much of the fabric into the stitch, adjust the width of the stitch so that you only catch one or two threads of the fold with the stitch. This is important so that stitches are not visible on the right side of the project. If your blind hem foot has an adjustment screw on the side, you can use this to reposition the fabric fold so that you only catch one or two stitches of the fold without having to change the width of the stitch. If your style of blind hem foot does not have the adjustment screw on the side, you will need to adjust the stitch width. When finished sewing, unfold the fabric and then press. The over edge foot is used when adding a seam finish at the edge of a seam allowance. There is a small bridge on the foot which allows more thread into the stitch. Fabric is guided along the extension at the front of the foot. When sewing is completed, the seam finish and fabric lay smoothly instead of bunching up along the edge providing a neat appearance. The button sewing foot is used to easily attach buttons, whether they are two-hole or four-hole buttons. It holds the button securely in place while a zigzag stitch is used to attach the button. If the machine has a drop feed lever, lower the feed dogs. If the machine does not have a drop feed lever, then place a feed dog cover plate over the feed dogs or simply set the stitch length to zero. Place the button into position on the project. Lower the presser foot over the button. Set the machine for a zigzag stitch. Turn the handwheel slowly to make sure that the swing of the needle clears the holes of the button. Then, sew about six to eight stitches. 
To finish, set the machine for straight stitch in left needle position and sew two to three stitches to tie off. For a four hole button, simply repeat this process for the opposite holes. The darning embroidery foot is used for free motion work. The most common type of free motion work is called stippling. Remove the regular presser foot and shank. Place the darning embroidery foot on the machine, making sure that the arm is resting over the needle bar. Tighten the side screw so that the foot is on the machine securely. Place batting in between the top fabric and backing fabric. Secure by pinning or basting together. Disengage the feed dogs. Set the machine for straight stitch. Thread the machine, then turn the hand wheel to draw up the bobbin thread. Lower the presser foot. Hold the fabric with two hands and then begin stitching in a meandering fashion, removing the pins as you go. Keep a moderately fast speed on the foot control while moving the fabric. The even feed foot is sometimes called the walking foot or dual feed foot. It works just like another set of feed dogs, helping to feed fabric through the stitching area. Use this foot to prevent shifting of quilt layers or shifting of seams in fabrics like velvet or corduroy. Remove the regular foot and shank. The even feed foot is then placed so that its arm is resting on the needle bar. Once it is in position, tighten the side screw. Secure the materials together, then sew. The quarter inch foot is most commonly used for quilting, but it can also be used for craft sewing. Pieced quilts are sewn with a one quarter inch seam allowance. It's important to the overall quality of the quilt that the seams are sewn accurately. Use the edge of the presser foot as a guide for sewing a one quarter inch seam. Sew and be sure to press the seam allowances before joining to the next piece. For best results, use a rotary cutter, mat, and ruler to cut fabrics. Fabrics that have cleanly cut edges will be easier to sew accurately. The open toe foot has a large open area in the front of the foot, providing a large view of your work which is very helpful when decorative stitching or couching over ribbons and trims. For example, to do this decorative embellishment, place a ribbon on top of the fabric with a lightweight tearaway or water-soluble stabilizer underneath to help the stitches sew smoothly. Select a decorative stitch wide enough to cover the ribbon, then sew. Remove the stabilizer when finished. The edge joining foot is used for joining trims or fabrics. For example, place a fabric, which has been turned under and pressed, next to a lace trim. A tearaway or water-soluble stabilizer should then be placed underneath. Select your stitch. Sew, joining the lace and fabric together. Remove the stabilizer when finished. The pintuck foot has several evenly spaced grooves on the bottom, which allow for sewing parallel rows of stitching closely together. It is used, along with a twin needle, to create wonderful surface texture on fabrics, very commonly seen on many garments as well as home deck accessories. The needle tension may be tightened to increase the depth of the tuck. After sewing the first tuck, Place the fabric under the foot again with the previously sewn tuck under one of the grooves of the foot. Continue to sew until the desired number of rows has been created for the project. Because creating pin tucks will cause the fabric to draw in, do all tucked rows and then cut out the fabric from the pattern piece. 
Another very interesting effect can be achieved by first sewing several parallel rows, spaced as desired, depending on the look you want. After the first rows have been stitched, sew parallel rows again, the same distance apart, but at a 90 degree angle to create textured squares in the fabric. The ruffler makes it possible to quickly and easily sew projects that have long sections of ruffles or pleats, and the results look professional. Remove the regular shank and foot. Attach the ruffler, making sure the arm is around the needle bar, then tighten the side screw. The adjustment setting on the side of the ruffler controls the depth of the tuck, and the other adjustment on the top controls how often the tuck forms. It can be set to tuck every 12 stitches, every 6 stitches, every stitch, or not at all. The more often it pleats, the more fullness it makes. The other adjustment controls how deep a tuck the ruffler makes. Smaller pleats will result in softer ruffles, and deeper tucks will create fuller ruffles. The cording foot has grooves on the top, which are used to guide a yarn or cord. Stitches are sewn over cords placed into the foot, as the foot guides them evenly. To do fabric embellishment, place up to three cords into the grooves of the foot. Thread the machine, and then choose a decorative stitch wide enough to cover the cords being guided through the presser foot. To create gathers, tie a knot in the cord's end, then place the cord into the foot's center groove, then behind the foot. Sew a zigzag stitch over the cord, being careful not to catch the cord with the stitch. When finished, the cord can be used to adjust fullness. The sew and serge foot, also known as a side cutter, trims excess fabric while sewing. The machine is set for an overedge stitch with the width set at its widest setting. The seam is sewn, finished, and trimmed all at once. Remove the regular presser foot and shank. Attach the cutter, making sure the cutter's arm fits around the needle bar. Tighten the side screw. Guide the fabric here for a 5 8 inch seam allowance or here for a 1 half inch seam allowance. With the presser foot down, slowly turn the hand wheel to make sure that the needle goes over the stitch finger on the cutter. Cut a notch at the beginning of the fabric because the cutter's blade cuts prior to the needle stitching. Place the fabric over the first metal platform and then under the second metal platform. Sew slowly.